I, I sometimes get asked to, uh, as to whether I work from the same photograph and do uh, repeats of, of paintings, and, yeah, and the answer is yes, I do. But I try to make them different every time. I also work from my old paintings, well, not old, but recent paintings that I've done over the last nearly three years that I've been doing YouTube demos. I do, yes, and uh, but I always try to do them differently. I just use them as a base for making a painting rather than a copy of a photograph of a painting or of a scene. And this today or this morning I'm going to do one that I've done several times, several times. Uh, I'll try to get that so that it's not reflecting too much light than what it is. Right. I'll just zoom in on it and see. It's a bit bright with the sun coming through the blinds. But this is uh, a picture I took about a year ago, or well, last winter. And it was very warm, warmly lit. So it wasn't a warm day, it was a cold day, but it was the sun was low and there was this golden light that appears in the photograph. Um, I took another shot of this one uh, a couple of days ago on, on the daily or the weekly bike ride along the Wandle and uh, but this this one I can adapt for all seasons. I, I, and I and the tree over here I don't put all of this all of it in, I just put a bit of it in. And I simplify all this. And but here the, the these bits of shadow here being cast from the trees, they they're almost uh, violet with and, and they show some frost. But whether I, I can do that or not, I don't know. But um, you can always go over that with a bit of uh, bit of gouache anyway, just to show a little bit of of the of the white light reflecting, or the warm white light reflecting off of the uh, off of the ice. But anyway, I'm going to have another go a go at it and see what I come up with. This will probably be the third or fourth time I've I've done it. I'm just just going to move the camera back to where. I want it. Okay, I think that's okay. Just move the screen so I can see what I'm doing. Right, okay. So I've got my two inch hake, I've got my, oops, did have, uh, a piece of paper. It's a 130 pound weight Fabriano uh, cold pressed. Very good for wetting wet, as I say every demo. I will be doing some acrylics in due course, but I'm well into the watercolours at the moment and making, I think, some sort of progress with them. Uh, palette is lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt amber, paints grey and burnt sienna. Apart from the burnt sienna, it's, it's the old Ron Ransom palette from 35, 36 years ago. And I find it does uh, just about everything I want it to. I, I've added the burnt sienna because I like it. But you don't have to use the palette that I used. It's, I know what the, all these colours can do. And you will learn as well by practice what you, what, what you like and what you don't like. You can make, make your own palette up. But for the UK landscape, the, these colours are mostly ideal. Uh, so that's about it really. But these trays come from, uh, I think they're called, it's, it's a site called the Doll's House. Emporium. Um, it's a, I think it's a a, a Cornish or a Devon company, and I just got them online because you you don't want to buy a hundred of these. They they come in big packs with their catering trays, but but the, but they were selling them in in packs of two, which is ideal. And I use both of them for different things. But this is my main palette. I've got a rigger, a number three rigger. I've got several riggers. And uh, this lovely number eight sable, Kalinsky sable, nice little brush. I bought that uh, at the big art fair in the summer, along with its mate, a, a number 14. So I'll wet the paper all over, enough yet for me.
the paper will expand and then we can just reclip it, keep it flat. I've got my board and it's about 30 degrees. Uh, I just work that in a bit so it's a more even than I've got it. When you use the, the use these clips, you tend to paint away from them the edge and you end up with white corners of your painting. So watch that. You can always overcome that by making the mount with the aperture a bit, a bit uh, smaller. Now that's uh, expanding already so let's just put it tight. You don't have to pre-stretch your paper. I used to, I've got a great big roll of uh, two inch tape or inch and a half tape, brown parcel tape. <coughs> the, the stuff you use a sponge to wet the glue. I used to stretch paper but, but this works fine. So I'll, I'll just give, give the, the whole thing a, just a general warm of sienna, raw sienna that is. Uh, I'll put a bit of a blue sky in. A bit of a lizard with my blue. And when you paint your bit of blue sky or your sky, whatever, whatever you're going to do as a sky, put it in the in the, the the water below. This is the River Wandle. It runs from Croydon to the Thames. There's about 16 miles to do. A bit darker in, in the foreground here. Interesting. When I finished, we finished the bike ride on uh, Tuesday. There was a repeat on television. A friend phoned me to say it was on of the Time Team. It's an archaeological program on Channel 4 UK TV fronted up by Tony Robinson, who used to be the, one of the stars of Blackadder, which I think went quite worldwide. Um, and he, uh, well, they, they uncovered uh, a, a site at Merton Abbey, what was the site of Merton Abbey. And there were a lot of factories on the, on the Wandle in the 19th century, 18th, 19th century. All the water mills powered the mills. And Liberties, the uh, famous department store, high class store around Bond Street, or somewhere around there, Oxford Street, Bond Street in London. They made uh, silk fabric or they, or they dyed silk fabric and printed patterns for fashion houses or fashion. And it's a big business uh, and it's all gone now. The, some of the buildings are still there. But they're, they, they, they're cafes, restaurants, sound studio. Right, I'm going, going, going to put in some nice burnt, burnt sienna and a bit of, bit of red. A bit of yellow. Soften the paint a bit. A bit. Make, a, make a light goldeny green, goldeny. And they uncovered the, 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 the one of the factories. They're small. They're small workshops, really. But we call them factories because some of them were. And they went down. They found foundations to the. to the, 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 the building where they printed the uh, cloth and, they, and they, they set up a, a workshop where they were showing how they actually dyed the cloth and how they printed it with the blocks and got all the different colours and then made this lovely dress fabric. Okay, well that's, that's a, bit, uh, a bit up and down there so Get some burnt umber in there. I'm yucking too much here and 
for getting to paint. Right, it's a bit of blue, a bit of... Let's get some of these lovely colours in across here. Just a lizard and, and ultramarine. So these would be those sort of shadows. And then we'll put in the yellow for the grasses. Bit of sienna. I'll go back over this with some darker colours. Alright, let's get this good, good dark here now. My paints have dried, I should have sprayed them earlier. Right, now we'll get some shad dark shadow in. I'll add a bit of burnt umber to this mix. I preserve the, the golden sort of colour in some of this, but we've got some some nice different sort of greens. A bigger tree here. No, no leaves from some of these trees, but there are lots of green. Ivy, and this is sort of wild ground here, surrounded by factories. Okay, let's uh, put some more that shadowy colour in. Just trying to make this a bit, a bit interesting, get some dark in there. But these are lovely warm darks using that alizarin crimson in the mix. Soften here and there. Now that comes up just a bit more. Let's get that. And I want that in there darker, but using the warm colours as alizarin, burnt umber, ultramarine. I can just etch into that. Oh, I was also asked that, do I use my nails? Because you can't always see what I do because my, my hand is covering. So, one fingernail, little fingernail, or index, and just scratch out some, some trees in here, silver birches. Yes. I'll go to thicken this up a little bit. <coughs> right. we'll, we'll work on the right hand side now. I'm finding these, I've got arthritis for years of fitting carpets in my business. And it, it, everything takes its toll eventually, doesn't it? And my hands, my wrists are quite painful these days. I still do a bit of carpet work, not a lot. I think most of my old customers think, think I'm dead. I'm going to do this. Right, now we'll uh, get some gold in here. 
and then I go in with those lovely blues. I've got to thicken up this, texture this, but I want it to dry first. So let's go in with the burnt sienna and with raw sienna so we can get a nice goldy sort of colour in here. Put that in and then this is the sort of reflection. And I'll go over some of that with the darker, warmer colours. Okay. But I want some of that to show through rather than cover the whole lot up with dark shadow. But now we're going with the sorry if I'm mumbling a bit but now these lovely warm bluey glycerin You can't see the bank on the right, really. That gives a good, rich, thick. That alizarin's been on there for three years, I think. Try not to use the grey, but, but this I want nice and Now that's picking up some light, so I'm going to put in some raw sienna in here. And we'll get dark. Put in some light, it's not really showing, but just on the edge of this. That's what I'm really doing, just putting a tree. I'll have to do some of some of the bigger. Lots of branches with that, so I'll, I'll do some of these with the rigger. I'll leave a bit of light shining through there. So far, so good. Right, rigor. Let's do a bit of a bit of rigor. Mm. 
Oops. A bit darker in there for my shadows on the trunk coming coming in from the side. I'll th thicken this up a little bit in there. Okay, that's a... Right, I'm going to thicken that up there. I'll put in some like foliage there. So I'll... No, that's too, too, too dark. All right. I'm trying to lose that trace, the, the paper's a bit wet at the moment. So let's go back over. Over this. Let's just get out. Detail. I'm going to have to do some of that with the rigger. There's also shadow in here as well. Okay, just put in some grasses and stuff. I, I'm going to do some rigor work on that. Some darker shadow side there on, on that. Okay, let that go. Right now, some some detail on the left while this is all drying off. I'll just show it's quite slow, slow. slow flowing through this little bit. So by putting this bank in and just lifting up some grasses and showing some reflections, then it strengthens the illusion of that being wet and reflecting through here.
I'll just drag some stuff down here. Okay. I can't see any ripples. Just do some roughy, rough stuff here. It's putting the darks in on the on the horizon here. For the edge of the rigger, put in some of this. Got quite a bit of work to do. I might use the hairdryer on that. Right, just take your headphones off if you're listening on headphones so we can actually dry this bit here. Let's put the clip back on. Using the hoke, let's put in some reflection of of this tree coming here. Right, a little bit of reflection in the water. Okay, just a little bit more on the Lots of twigs, twiggy things. Okay, we, before we overdo it, let's just put a signature on it and uh, put it put it in the mount and see what we've done. Okay, that was just about shown. Got the birds. It's quite an amazing uh, little river in its life. It's supported scores of mills, water mills. Part of the industrial industrial revolution, right? I'll uh, 
I'm not going to show you the photograph again because it's not really important. Just to show you this in a in a mount, in the blue mount. Okay. Well, there we are. So the river bundle in uh, autumn, late autumn. Early winter. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.